seriously. But what a disappointment. Um, it's disappointing enough when months and months and months ago, this person knows exactly how it's transmitted before anybody else, exactly what you need to do with it. And you have him on recordings, but I'm just going to say it has, we are really into territory that's just, I'm bummed. I'm, I'm, I'm really disappointed in, in all of this. And that is not a political thing. This is science. Everybody in this class is here to get a degree in something that relates to science and the knowledge associated with it. And uh, <clears throat> truly blows me away. And I don't, uh, you know, so somebody typed, that's what they get. You know, I'm not gonna, I won't make a value judgment about this except for to say that I'm just, I don't know, I'm disgusted. Um, there is a thing about leadership and it does matter and you people and your lives are being put on hold. My kids are being put on hold and yep. Anyway, it's big, it's big. And, and this is a social class. So again, we talk about this because it's a social thing that we're not doing well. I mean, there's more cases in the white house right now than there are in several countries combined. Um, it's shockingly negligent, potentially from a legal potential uh, perspective, homicidally negligent, um, but anyway, so, uh, I hope that all of you are staying safe. Um, and I know that you know, uh, what the right thing is to do, but our band was invited this weekend to play. We're doing an Indiegogo for the first time in 15 years. We've never asked for money, but we've just like everybody else has been hosed. We've lost $30,000 in gig money in the last several months. So we decided to play a private party on Saturday. Um, not knowing what the scenario would be at a very wealthy place. And luckily for us, you know, the deck was raised and we were completely on our own. Nobody had access to us and it was outside, but there wasn't one person there out of 60 people that was wearing a mask. And the privilege, the, it's my job to break this down on a daily basis. The privilege right now, the overprivilege that is leading people to die is staggering. I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, so if Saturday is any sort of, and these were all people that were between 50 and 70 years old for a birthday party for somebody, you know, bless them that they wanted to hire a rock and roll band that had no idea what they were getting themselves into. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm disappointed yeah. and because we were at 208,000 lives lost. So you know, please, for anybody watching this, I'm not going off. This is not about a party thing. This is science. This is a pandemic. And wake up because you're killing people. And people's lives are being destroyed. And it's disappointing to me. Um, anyway. All right. <clears throat> um, I've thought about lots of this. But, uh, you know, yeah, this isn't about differing political opinions. This is about science. And if you're here at this institution to pay eighty to $100,000 for a degree based on science, then I think we're all on the same page here. Why the people that are in charge cannot be honest and transparent and on the same page months ago so that we would all be safer is beyond me. Anyway, um, all right. Compassion, though, is what I'm trying to use on a Monday morning today for everybody. So if you're in quarantine, I, I love you and I hope you're doing well. Um, you know, everybody just stay positive. Well, you look, you know what I mean. Don't stay positive. Be negative, but while being, well, anyway, let's move on. <laughs> All right. Chapter six uh, is on deviance. Whoa, there's a lot of deviance going on right now, right? And the, my favorite thing is that deviance is like from a certain point of view. Do you remember the part, maybe you're not into Star Wars, right? But like Luke's all super mad and he's on Dagobah and, he, and Yoda just died, right? Or he flowed with the force, I guess. There's no dying, you know, there. And, and he sits down and Obi-Wan Kenobi rolls up as a ghost and he's like, how's it going? And he's like, you didn't tell me he was my dad. And Obi-Wan's like, well, from a certain point of view, what I told you, you know, right? Like, and it's like, no, you just lied to me. And so the best thing or why I'm telling you this story is because the greatest thing is that deviance is from a certain point of view. <laughs> like who considers something deviant? It, like depends. It depends on power and access and gender and social norms and, and money. And, and uh, all, it relies on so many things that I think um, 
wow, I think deviance is one of the most interesting things that we can study. Um, and, and uh, oh, I'm just looking over here and yeah. Um, and anybody who's lost somebody, you know, when I speak about COVID, I wanna speak about it as seriously as I can. So yeah, nothing but love for people um, who've lost somebody here. Uh, and for the rest of the people that are just going about their business, wake up. It's time to do right by other people. Anyway, back to Star Wars and back to Deviants. Um, so, right, from a certain point of view, me mentioning this this morning, people could take great offense by that and say, that's really deviant. You're a professor. What's that have to do with anything? Well, it has to do with a lot because we're talking about sociology. From a certain point of view to me or to other people, it seems ridiculously deviant to not address something like that tremendous lack in leadership, which leads directly to people dying. Um, so we could pick just about anything and look at it from multiple points of view and say that is deviant. So it depends who's deciding what is deviant. Maybe it's your parents because you live with your parents and maybe they have, and I released some questions this morning, a really different idea of what deviance is, right? Like they think that going out with the boys is deviant. Uh, but maybe, maybe the boys don't see that as deviant, right? Or whatever that might be. So we're gonna look at this um, in detail. Uh, and let's look at it right now. And I'm gonna try and do a screen share and see if that's, oh, uh, no, why is that out? No, let me see here real quick. Um, cancel that out, let's see if we can, where is that deviant? There we are. Okay, screen share. Do I see it? There it is. Somebody making a sandwich back there, kid? Yeah. All right. How's it going, Z? Yeah. <laughs> Every, I just mostly, not even while I'm lecturing to you, but throughout the day, I just hear food things in the kitchen, and then that's it. I hear, like, bags of chips rustle, and then people are gone. Um, so that's how it works in my house. Anyway, deviant. Oh, some kids there playing with an AK-47. That might be deviant. Um, skateboarding. I was the original. Can everybody see the, the screen share right now? The, okay, cool. Skateboarding, we were the original generation where people had to put up signs that said no skateboarding or inline skating. Inline skating, I think, would be um, rollerblades. And that's just embarrassing. So, of course, you'd put a sign up about that. Just kidding. Uh, look, this is not the first time. Colin Kampernick is not the first time that we've seen athletes protest. This is a black power symbol at the Olympics in the 60s. Um, deviants, a home birth over there on the left. Home birth could be considered deviant, right? I mean, we don't do as many home births, um, and we could look at that, obviously. Uh, and maybe it's more deviant to birth in a hospital. I, I think it is, from my personal perspective. Um, oh, Big Mouth, that's one of my favorite cartoons. If you have not seen Big Mouth, I don't know. It's pretty great. Maybe I shouldn't steer you in that direction. You might think it's deviant. Uh, cannabis down there on the right. Um, deviant, maybe, sorta. Um, anyway, let's start thinking about deviants. And this is really, there we go, Banksy. I love Banksy. Uh, I've got his picture up there, obviously, because doing art in public places on buildings that's uh, not your property, that's legal. Now you've even crossed over from just like social deviants into like the legal system, right? Um, tagging buildings or things like that. So questions here uh, to get you start thinking about deviants. Am I deviant? How? What does deviance mean? I guess you can't say if you are deviant unless you know what it means, but even though we don't have a formal definition of deviance, I got a feeling you know what it means, right? Um, why are some things considered deviant while others are not? Why consider the concept of social control? Ooh, social control. I mean, come on, deviance, social control, all of this is like, it's like a gold mine for like sociologists and people interested in human behavior. Um, who is deviant on campus? Who and why? Uh, good, good. Uh, why are some people considered deviant and not others? Um, all right, great. Um, and we've got a whole lot of other questions. So are you considered deviant? Got the dude up there, OJ, uh, and Ted Nugent, right? Um, got some losers up there in bed sheets. Uh, not sure. Um, and uh, maybe Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> oh, it's probably pretty deviant of your teacher to call those folks losers. No, it's not. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they suck. Uh, all right. All right. So 
Does everyone, regardless of race, run the same risk of being sent to prison if they engage in illegal drug use? Um, so we've got share of all uh, users of illegal drugs, people that say uh, that they engage in that behavior, 12.6%. African-Americans, 66.3%. Um, uh, for folks that are non-Hispanic whites, people of European descent. And then we look at the share of inmates in state or federal prison, though convicted of, uh, convicted of those drug offenses, suddenly we've got 12% of the drug users representing 50% of the prison population. Um, obviously, uh, that is deviant on so many levels, right? Um, and, and we know uh, that policing has to change. We are talking about that in this culture, engaging in that discussion, but we have been for decades and decades and decades and decades. Um, and it's really, really, really slow going because we know in regards to drug use that uh, people who are people of color are twice as likely to get pulled over, even though people of European descent are twice as likely to be carrying the drugs. So we're not stopping people because of the statistics that we know to be true, you are more likely by a great deal um, to actually have those drugs, but we're policing with the history of race relations and all sorts of things, which turns out that the criminal justice system or the total institution, and I love that name, that's the name that sociologists give to prisons, total institution. Um, we know uh, that that is riddled with deviance in its practices itself. And even over the weekend, an African-American woman was arrested down in Aurora. They threw her in the car upside down. She was begging for her life, lucky for everyone. Um, as she's put in the car on her face and on her head while restrained, that she was still alive when they showed up. So from a community perspective, people are gonna look at the police and say that's deviant. People are gonna look at protests um, to have the police be trained more and because of these things as deviant, right? Um, so if you're the family of a police officer, maybe you're heavily invested and it looks like to you like other people are engaging in a greater share of deviance, especially when they say things like defund the police. Um, so from many different perspectives, many different people um, can be considered deviant. Whoa, 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 there I am. Catfish posse, yo, mm, that's right. That's the other, here's the other posse I, I belong to for like uh, 12 years. And that was Loveland Northside. That's right. Just me and a whole bunch of retirees in my neighborhood. <laughs> so if you're wondering what the sign is for Loveland, it's Loveland Northside. Um, so I asked you if you're deviant and I roll through this uh, in my, um, I roll through this already in my, uh, my lecture, but we'll look at this, right? We'll look at this for a second. Newsflash, I'm not asking the question. I'm telling you all I'm deviant, right? Today, speeding, ooh, that was, that was not today. I have not gotten in my car for a while. Lizzo fan, that's right, huge Lizzo fan. Huge, huge Lizzo fan. To some people though, I guess that could be deviant, right? Um, I mean, I've got a lot of gangster rap in my collection. A lot of Dre, a lot of Snoop, a lot of Biggie, a lot of Tupac. Suppose that could be considered deviant or 20 years later now, it's like, yeah, whatever. Maybe that's not deviant, something else. Uh, eating organic, I don't know. Could that be considered deviant? How could, how could eating organic be considered deviant? I'm going to open it up to the class for a second. What do you think? Sounds weird. You Could you repeat the question? Yeah, how can eating organic food be seen as deviant? Seems weird. All right, well, from my perspective, my parents, like, really don't understand the, like, definitions of, like, vegetarian or vegan. And so they just, like, kind of, they don't refuse, but they act like they don't know. Like, you know, like, if, like, it's organic or not or where it came from. And so, like, when I start to argue about it, then they just, like, don't it doesn't process right. so i'm guessing they think it's deviant for me to do that but like i don't i don't really know yeah um that's a really good uh that's a really good one of their dietary choices right like somebody might decide to be vegan or vegetarian because of like their adverse reaction to something right that they're eating but people are just like oh you're just trying to be vegan trying to be super healthy right you know and it's like <laughs> No, I almost died eating some horrible meat that was tainted, right? 
But uh, so we don't even know the reasons, but, and this is, everybody does this. We don't know the reasons why somebody's doing something. So it's easy for us to look at something and be like, oh, that's deviant, right? I mean, somebody speeds past you or cuts in front of you. We don't know if they're headed to the hospital. You know, we're just like, hey, that's not, you know, uh, that's not cool. Um, but, but what if, what if they got a baby in the car? I mean, my friend Ira lived up in Evergreen. His wife started to go into labor. Mostly it never happens like this. That's like in TV shows. Normally it takes like hours and hours and hours. My wife, she was in labor for 39 hours at home for the first baby. Oh, oh I'm telling you, some people would be like, that's deviant. But my friend Ira, he had to pull over 10 minutes outside of Evergreen, go into the back seat, deliver the baby, tie off the umbilical cord with his shoelace. Boom, that guy is farilla. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Props to him. So, I mean, you, we never know, but we cast this judgment all the time. That's one of the interesting things about deviants, right? Hates cell phones. I do. I do. I still do. I think it's the most worthless invention on the face of this particular planet. Uh, do I rely on mine now? I do, but I just check this out. You'll think this is deviant. I just got my cell phone four years ago. I never had a cell phone up until four years ago. I mean, if I didn't have a cell phone 10 years ago, I was late to the party. Four years ago is ridiculous. Um, all right. In the past. So this isn't right now. This isn't, this isn't the me you know. This is a long time ago, right? Underage drinking. Uh, Anti-war protester. You bet. Cohabitation. All right. Cohab now, by cohabitation, I mean what my parents would have considered shacking up, okay? So living with somebody who you're dating. Um, pot did inhale a whole lot? Maybe. I, this is a long time ago, like I said. It's, in, it's The past is like 10 minutes ago, so we just don't know when this was. But let's just, let's just assume that was forever ago. Premarital sex? Um... Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, theft of a chocolate bar. Oh, this is where I'm exposed. This is where I'm really exposed is not being all that hardcore. Let me be honest. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe when I was 13 or 12 or 11, I, I, I might have stolen a chocolate bar, but uh, I didn't get caught, so maybe it wasn't deviant. Hmm? All right. Um, in the future. I don't know. This is what excites me about human being. Maybe something with my tractor. Maybe I'll just lose it and drive my tractor like into town, running into vehicles and running over. Like, I don't know. I don't know. That's, somebody actually did that in Colorado a handful of years ago up in the mountains, I think up in South Park or somewhere around there. Um, I'm just excited to find out because I think deviance is a really, really, really interesting um, and exciting thing to look at. So let's Let's look back here. I'm going to stop the screen share for a minute. Um, going to look back here at some of these. Uh, uh, most people would eat normal food. Organic food maybe more expensive. Sure, that's a great, that's, that's one right there. Price. People could consider it deviant because it's more expensive. Um, goes outside of social norms. Don't panic organic. Eat well, live long. That's mental. Um, uh, that child will never hear that story. Jason said real G's only. That's right. Uh, I think it was the bulldozer dude. Wow, you see, look, I try and do all this good every semester with hundreds of students, but somebody remembers the bulldozer dude. Now I'm telling you what, will I be remembered if I don't get on that tractor sometime when I'm older and do something crazy? So anyway, uh, all right, good. Let's look at top hat ones. I know that I asked this question the other day, but I want to, I want to look, or just, or excuse me, I just asked it this morning. Type one act. I got 43 of these. I'm going to, I'm going to look at some of these because, because I want us to get a, a feel for this. Type one act that you think is deviant. All right. So this is you. So I'm not going to talk about your parents. Um, but this is what you think is getting deviant. So it's interesting because we're going to contrast these lists. I'm just going to read some of these from the list, but we'll see both of them next time. But I remember when I got my first tattoo um, at a biker rally, in the back of a refrigerated truck, probably not the best place to get your tattoo. They had an autoclave in there, so I knew they were sterilized, but eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, I remember I did not show my mom. I was like 19 or 20, I don't even know, 18. And I showed my dad, and the first thing my dad said is, better not show your mom. 
this. We both had a, an idea right there. Who would think that that was deviant and who wasn't? And I don't even, I don't even know when I finally showed her that I tattooed, had a tattoo, maybe a year from then. And I don't keep a lot from my parents, you know, because I'm an only child and we're close. But that was one that I was like, eh, I don't know, right? All right, so let's look. This is 43, 44 respondents. What my students find to be deviant. Murder, stealing, smoking, uh, being muscular. <laughs> Being swole is deviant. Uh, all right, good, good. Uh, using slurs, Com composting. All right, yeah. Again, from a certain point of view, right? Compo good. Uh, <clears throat> rape, yes. Uh, de defying rules, getting my tattoo. Anti-society, drug use, doing hard drugs. Um, someone yelling at a poem reading. <laughs> that's that's kind of an awesome answer would you would anybody come forward if they were the ones that that answered that some savage savage deviance right there anybody I'll give you another second if you're the poetry person all right all right well it's funny because we might think that it's deviant for somebody to yell or talk, right, while somebody's reading poetry, but I can't remember how many times my band's been playing over the last 20 years where people are in the audience and we're playing a slow song and they're like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> wait, wait a second. Shut up. Uh, good, right? Doing drugs, uh, not accepting the LBGQ community, breaking the rules, <clears throat> rioting, protesting, sexual harassment, bad hygiene, robbery, cheating, walking around naked in public. All right, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, really, um, if somebody did that, probably on campus, like I, I think it's been 10 years straight at CSU or 11 years straight where everybody has worn clothes to class every single time. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that one right there would, would definitely be deviant. Um, although I will admit that people on campus of all sorts of genders, really, really do push those limits sometimes to wearing almost nothing, um, you know. All right, walking around naked in public, breaking the law, um, uh, judging others that are in a separate position in life than yourself, using drugs, being racist, littering, looting, putting milk in a bowl before the cereal. Can I get a non-denominational amen? Can I get a non-denominational hallelujah amen? I mean, who did, look, people. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> remember, that's non-denominational. See how open and accept. You'll never catch me between that. Never, because I'm a sociologist. I'm always there for all of you, <laughs> except for the people that put milk in their cereal bowl first. How? Oh, well, well let's just. Okay, I'm going to ask once. Somebody in this class does that. Why? I think there's a. I think there's a reason for it. I think there's a legitimate reason for it. But why? I warm up the milk in the microwave first? What? All right, I'm stopping. I'm, st I'm not gonna ask it. No more cereal questions. This is, that's almost, yep, that's over the line, Donnie. Over the line. <laughs> uh, I don't, yep, I'm not gonna, I don't know. That's not how I did it back in the 70s. But you know, kids these days with their whatever, warm cereal. <laughs> All right, uh, cat calling. Raise your hand if you don't know what cat calling is. I think that's an old term. Okay, I see a couple of hands. That's like, you know, when people see somebody and they're like, woohoo, baby, or something like that. Obviously, I'm not very good at cat calling. <laughs> hey, you got some fries to go with that shake. That's, that's one. Uh, all right, good. Um, and. Facing the opposite way in an elevator, cheating on someone or <laughs> cheating. And then in parentheses it says, on someone or on a test. Good, good. I'm glad that we've, we've broken down the possible scenarios. <laughs> uh, talk, taking advantage of those weaker than you, theft. Good. Um, what's something that's on that list that you don't think is deviant? Or, 
what's something that's not on that list that you think is deviant? I mean, because we had a lot of people say drugs, but then we had a lot of people say hard drugs. Um, what's, what's something on that list that you think is, is not really deviant, even though we labeled it as deviant? Okay, protesting isn't deviant. So why? You know, in sociology, I really want to know the why. So if you're going to say protesters are bad, right? Well, why is it deviant or how isn't it deviant? Because I think we can see it from multiple points of view, and that's our job, right, as sociologists. What do you think? This isn't on protesting. This just goes back to your first question about just, like, what do you think is deviant? What don't you think is deviant? I think it's hard to define if something is deviant because there's always that one situation where you're like, well, maybe, because you're like, feeling's bad, and you're like, okay, this woman has three children, is a part like, works three jobs, and doesn't have anyone giving her any help. So she stole baby formula. Like, it's like that kind of thing. It's so hard to justify what is deviant and what is deviant because I think a lot of it is situational. And that's what we're going to get into in this chapter. You know, deviance is not, it, it could be any, it could be literally everything and everyone from a certain point of view. Um, and, and it involves, right, a perceived moral, moral judgment and something that's different. If, you know, we go back to the lecture here, that, that's what we're gonna get to. You know, something's different and there's a perceived moral judgment. So then it's like, whoa, well, who's, who's making the moral judgment, right? Do, do we think that that person is, is worthy of making a moral judgment, has shown us that? Or are these people just people that have power and it has nothing to do with morality? Obviously, right? Um, so let's go back to that though, because I think it's interesting, the protesting piece. I think we can see it multiple ways. How could protesting be seen as deviant or definitely not deviant? What do you think? All right, so somebody said uh, protesting isn't, but destroying property is. All right, uh, so showing up to protest that's really a fundamental right. You know, like if you're, you're gonna exercise to be able to assemble, freedom of assembly, for you to be able to do that is essential um, for us to get anywhere in regards to human rights. Destroying property, um, at what point does that cross over into deviance? Is it, is it ever not deviant? Um, all right, good, so I like, I like that distinguishment. Standing up for your rights, don't be afraid. If a protest turns violent, um, and, and here's an interesting thing. Let's think about it this way. Um, protests can be violent when there's no physical violence. I mean, if you look at somebody standing there and screaming and shouting and spitting, it doesn't look the most nonviolent, and it can be not nonviolent. So let's also be sure to know that nonviolent forms of protest don't just mean you're not attacking somebody. It also means how you're comporting yourself. Matter of fact, some of my most powerful protests that I've seen have been silent protests um, where people stand in unity, but without getting into the sort of violence maybe that, that they're opposing in the first place. Um, revolutionary war started by extreme violence and protests. Now we're getting into a point where we're kind of getting away from is it deviant or not into a place where maybe deviance and violence are necessary to counter the massive amounts of deviance and violence being perpetrated on other groups. Okay, right? So again, it goes from just violent, nonviolent, protesting, looting, to would we have ever gotten where we are today if all protests had been nonviolent, right? So, um, and, and again, it, I, think, I think you can look at violence as a pretty easy way to determine um, deviance as well. Yeah. Um, must be smarter than the man. Well, we've got to say the man because we know that the man could be anybody. <laughs> it's kind of like that part in School of Rock where that kid's like, you're the man, man. And he, what he really means to the female principal is not a good thing, but she's like, oh, thank you. Right. You know? You're the man, Miss Mullins. That's right. Is that her name in that? Yeah, I've watched that movie so many times. That's her name. Yes, good. Um, Jack Black is one of my favorite human beings in the world. I even play in a duo 
uh, that's a ginger centric duo that's like Tenacious D, but for gingers. Um, we don't play a whole lot of tunes, but we, we do talk a lot. We do, we do waste a lot of time with, with uh, sunscreen jokes. I keep it real. I could burn in front of this computer right now. All right. Um, all right, good. Uh, let's look at something else. What about, um, what about voting? I mean, let, let's take sort of the election. What are some deviant things that have come up? What are some things that don't seem deviant? Uh, let's, let's, you know, it's, it's a big deal right now. What are some things? And, and, and from different perspectives, okay? And where do I start? Well, I mean, we pretty much figure that this is gonna go off like most elections um, in ways and in ways it seems unlike any other. Um, so what do you think? Um, what's deviant about voting? What could possibly be deviant about voting or this election? And what's not? All right, well, let's move away from voting. I like this one. How about, how about, and let's try and look about it. I don't know, from different points of view. Um, what about mask wearing? I like that one, right? Relevant today, if one form of deviance is not wearing a mask in public. Um, okay, I, I think that's deviant. We, we know my opinion on it. How could you, even if you feel that way, have the same or have a different opinion? How could we see maybe not wearing a mask in public is, is not deviant? Because I'm just trying to get us to look at things from as many different perspectives as we can. Maybe if you have asthma or, or a pre-existing medical condition, sure. I think that there's a small, very, very, very small percentage of the population, but I think that that's a real thing for some folks. Depends on the environment you're in. In a rural town, it might be considered sick. Uh, to, good, absolutely. Um, maybe in small rural places that were, in Illinois, I know that it was like, my mom was telling me the first couple months of COVID, we're doing really great. And I was like, ah. Why, why do I feel like rural Illinois just isn't going to do really great overall or rural Wisconsin? Um, but maybe from a certain point of view in those small towns, somebody wearing a mask, somebody kind of, you know, going in that direction would be the minority and could be seen as deviant. Good, good. Um, and look at all, look at all this right here. See, I love these. These are, these are just things in, in general that are deviant, right? Third party votes. Uh, we can see third party votes as deviant. Yeah, also the, ex the non-existence of another strong party besides just two parties, right? The thought that there's just two parties and that's somehow gonna cover democracy. That might be deviant in and of itself or looking at a third party as deviant. Um, uh, paying off a porn star to remain silent. I, I would think most Americans would, would think that that's, most people would, would label that as deviant. And then again, people can make exceptions. Um, not getting a flu shot, ooh, ooh, this, I like this one, right? Um, how is not getting a flu shot deviant? This one seems interesting to me. Or why or how? I'll wait for this one. I got time. Talking too much today. I think that the thing about flu shots is a lot of people think that it's important to get one for herd immunity, but then a lot of people think, well, so I've a teacher or I had a teacher in high school who couldn't get a flu shot because she's allergic to egg and that's what they use in in the shots so that they can have the virus live in it hmm. um, so she couldn't get flu shots so that's who herd immunity is for it's not for people who think that um, that vaccines cause autism that's not there's no proof or evidence to back that up 
And I think that that's why it becomes deviant because people think it's unnatural, but when you actually look at the science behind it, it's, it's a lot safer than a lot of people would think, but it works with what the, uh, the amount of people who get flu shots now, supposedly. My mother is the nurse and when people come in, or for COVID, when people were coming in, they would have to ask them if they had their flu shot. And she was surprised with how many people would say no. So I don't know if it's necessarily deviant. It's just kind of seen as maybe a little bit reckless because it's like this thing that'll give you a chance to not get sick. And a lot of people don't do it for various amounts of reasons. Yeah, and those reasons don't have to be scientific. I mean, that's one of the interesting things about human beings, correct? <laughs> like a lot of the reasons or the decisions that we make about science, we don't make scientifically, right? And so that's, that's interesting in and of itself. Good. Um, not denouncing white supremacy. Yeah, I think now if you're talking about 70 years ago in 1950, I would think that it was the plan of a lot of politicians and folks like that to try and pick up votes by not denouncing it, by supporting it. Um, because, of course, you're still talking about being in segregation, legalized segregation, where people of color can't go to school. So you're still talking about you know, when it's the law of the land and that's the law that the Supreme Court decides, then that's kind of apparently a reflection of norms and values, right? But you fast forward 70 years and, you know, anybody not being able to say, hey, is white supremacy bad? And anybody, any of you, we're not just talking about politicians or the president of the United States, anybody nowadays were to say, I don't have a comment on that. I think that we would think that that's deviant, right? Um, and, and we have moved so far, although we have obviously a long way to go, but so far from that society uh, to be able to swing back around again, where somehow, um, you know, failing to denounce white supremacy would be a norm or a value. It's not. Um, currently, our norms and values, though, they go through changes and get eroded and go back in time and go forward, and we know that and swirl around. It's not just one or the other. Um, I would say right now, yeah, we're still in the time when that would seem um, to be kind of mind-blowing in a way, while we understand that we're experiencing a resurgence in um, white supremacist activities, um, you know, and violent activities, uh, as flagged by our own FBI and, and our own government. Um, maybe if you have asthma, okay, facts back here, going to go down for a few more messages. Um, uh, sorry, sorry. I gotta Can I say there. something about the, the vaccine thing again? Because everyone's yeah. referring, <laughs> everyone thinks it's the, so if you went to public school, you have a vaccine of some sort. You have to have at least like, there's so many different types of vaccines. So you don't have to think just the flu shot. Um, herd immunity is for all kinds of things. You have vaccines if you've ever gone to public school. You cannot go to public school unless you're like, <sighs> there's a few situations where you can, like if you're allergic, but I mean, herd immunity doesn't just apply to the flu shot. Cause I'm, I'm reading some of the comments and you guys right. are like, I've never had the flu and I've never gotten a flu shot. Well, yeah, but you've also got millions of other vaccines and you're probably pretty healthy because of that. So I don't know. They would be deviant if you right. didn't get all of those vaccines, I think. Sure. And I, I think that's the way to look at it. Um, I'm, you know, obviously, and that's where this, somebody put up here that we're very, you know, uh, American because we're individualistic and vaccines are super collectivist. Yeah, that's one of the problems we're having wrap our, wrapping our heads around this as a culture is getting everybody to do a certain behavior because you know it's healthier scientifically, right? Whether that's seat belts or whether that's, um, you know, wearing a mask. Um, but we're not a very collective society. And I think right now we are learning just how not collective we are. And I think it pays to be individualistic but I think that right now it could really bite you in the butt if you're so individualistic that you can't act for the greater good. And I know that that's changed because in World War II, you were asked to go fight a war or you were asked to ration your food or you were drafted to go fight the Vietnam War. And people did all of those things for the greater good, although they started to resist some of those things. But think about how simple wearing a mask is and people resist that. And we're not asking you to ration your food or go to war or, or things like that, too. So, yeah, um, good. Uh, really interesting. And I think that um, 
yeah, I think that vaccines is, is a kind of a really good way to look at that collective piece and how we struggle with science and individualism. And that's why we look at it from a sociological um, point of view. All right, good. Um, so do we have any other questions? I just at least introduced the chapter for you. I've got three videos that, that go, go to town on deviants. We'll talk about that um, more. Um, we'll talk about that more on Wednesday. Um, X Files, the chicken pox vaccine was to help aliens transform to Earth. So I keep. <laughs> ah, yes. And we should watch more X Files anyway, because that was a good show. Um, anyway, uh, any other questions about where we're headed? Make sure you're posting on the discussion. Make sure that uh, I'll, I'll make sure that all of the grades are released. I do believe they are. Some people didn't have access to them, so maybe only half were released. I'll talk to the grad assistants today and we'll get on top of that. Um, yeah, we've got one fire that turned in, well, then there's another fire and now two giant fires heading towards each other. Um, I believe the Mullen fire and then of course the, the Cameron Peak fire and we're just uh, continuing to get hosed. So that's another thing like COVID that's very real is climate change and it's gonna cost us more and more and more until we start doing mitigation instead of an adaptation. Um, but uh, I guess we'll get around to that sometime. Anyway, any more class questions? Anything? No? I don't have a question. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't have a question. I just have like a very interesting story. I come from a town of like less than 10,000 people and we actually had a mumps outbreak in my high school last year. And there was this whole ordeal where um, like teachers and the nurse like would come into the classroom and just remove kids that didn't have certain vaccinations. And it was like, we had a, it was homecoming weekend and we like, you weren't allowed into the dance unless you were vaccinated. And it was this whole ordeal and it got really political because it's such a small town. So everyone was talking about it and it actually made national news. And so that's, I'm very familiar with the whole vaccine. And like, if it's, I just thought it was interesting because Athena made that point about how it's not just a flu shot. It's a lot of different vaccines that go into it. Yeah, I, you know, it's never one or the other. You know, that's, that's what you will all learn in this life and that you're just getting to learn right now as young people. I'm 47, so I could say that. Like, it is never one or the other. There are not just two sides. Anybody who thinks it's conservative or, or liberal, anybody who thinks that it's GOP or Democrat, like, you're doing yourself and everyone else a great disservice thinking that there would be not a multi-dimensional approach to all of this. Vaccines are the same. Uh, it's not just anti-vax or vax. You don't have to give all the vaccines immediately to your child as a baby right away and hit them with everything at once. You can plan it out. You might not do chickenpox vaccination because up until a certain age, that person might catch that naturally. You might not do polio vaccination unless you travel. But again, it just shows you how uh, by thinking, binary thinking, we do that with gender as well, how binary thinking takes options away from us as human beings. It takes different gradations away from us and the chance to really understand topics from a, a much deeper perspective. And that's what we're doing here in sociology. We're not going to look at things as black and white because we know that that's just seriously, um, you know, where the world is. It's not just one thing or the other. All right. Hey, everybody. Um, thank you for being good people and do good things. Um, get out there and do your part to make this a better world. Uh, yeah, just engage. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Take care, everybody. Talk to you later. Be good people. Do good things. Bye. Thank you. Yep. Take care.